and welcome back. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, the Axis forces today of World War II. Uh, last time we, we talked about the the Allies, the West and the East, and, and now we're going to talk about those nations that were uh, set on the the other side of of the conflict, and we call them the Axis powers. Uh, they they technically were allies, but we. We, we, we seem to forget that. So, so we're just going to follow some basic themes throughout these nations here. Um, and these are all pretty, pretty distinct and, and interesting, and each has their own different methods and such. But, but all of these nations fell under these, these fascist regimes. That, um, totalitarianism, the idea that a leader or a few leaders have, have the knowledge and ability to control the country over a democratic process. Uh, they also favored the authoritarian control of the government, so they were very much about secret polices and, and cracking down on civil liberties. Uh, they, they favored government control of the economy. Um, in, in Italy over here, Benito Mussolini, uh, this, this guy, Benito Mussolini, um, Benito Mussolini, he formed what well, they call them syndicates, which are basically government and and business uh, collusions or um, cooperatives that that cooperated to earn profit, but not necessarily to um to to help the fellow man. Um, they also all had a distinct distaste of communism, and we'll see that that thread pull all the way through. All these nations really did the best they can to suppress communist. Um, theories and thoughts and protests and and uh, that was the other main idea over here you know in the soviet union you had that too so there's a really didn't like communism whatsoever and they also produced sizable militaries during the 1930s which was a huge issue um, a lot of it was to avoid the great depression or to get themselves out of that 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 distinct issue but they all produced sizable militaries military in Military spending increased five to six fold at least. Um, and then during the 1930s, you also had increased territorial claims. And we'll learn a lot more about that in the origin section. But what we're going to do is just kind of go um, uh, country by country of, of the main Axis powers. And over here, we have Germany. Uh, Germany was kind of the, the main aggressor we know as. And uh, a after World War II, uh, Germany was led by the Weimar Republic, which was a, a democratically elected republic that uh, most, most of the nation was, were either um, not too excited of or, or extremely disliked. Those guys like these dudes. These were the Nazis. These were high members of the Nazi party, Hermann Goering. Uh, Joseph Goebbels, chief information officer. Hermann Goering, of course, would become the leader of the Luftwaffe. And you also had Heinrich Himmler, who controlled um, and, and was sort of second in command to this gentleman, Adolf Hitler. Now, th this is an excerpt from Triumph of the Will. And Triumph of the Will is a, is a famous movie of the time um, glorifying the Nazis. And this is actually the last speech of the... Um, of the movie itself. So there's, there's this guy introducing Adolf Hitler. And we'll go to the end of the video because I think that's some of the most important. Such an interesting view of, of, of what happened in Germany and, and the kind of popularity Adolf Hitler had and the things that he was going to do to save the German people. I mean, it was, a, it was truly an amazing part of history, though it turned out to have incredibly awful consequences later. Uh, Adolf Hitler, of course, was a member of the National Socialist Party, though he has that word socialist in there. Now, we were just talking about how they don't like communism and socialism, but of course, I think the most important word there is national. National Socialist Party. They were a, a nationalist group. Um, and the Nazis would, would actually grip the nation, and the, a lot of times, once they finally took control, would actually marginalize a lot of the political competition. Um, the regime created a lot of secret police units. Over here, as I said, you have Heinrich Himmler uh, with the Gestapo that's executing a, a Russian citizen as well as there's a uh, th this SS he was the Heinrich Himmler of course most famously leader of the SS second in command um, this was a military SS unit the SS Viking but there are also um, civilian units too that would patrol houses and, and such and a lot of people have that Holocaust view of, of, of what the 
of what the SS did, which isn't totally wrong, but they were kind of involved in, in the whole scheme of things in a lot of different, um, lot of different areas. And you have this this is really interesting um, anti-Semitic propaganda here. Here you have these these uh, creepy looking Jewish folk who are are trying to take away Germany's monies and things like that. That was the thought of the time that the, the Jews were stealing from the German people and that they needed to be aggressively wiped out. Um, here's, I think this is one of the, one of the better ones. You have a, an old Jewish man <laughs> with a star of David um, behind the veil of the Soviet Union, the United States, and Britain. So just you know, already forming that idea that the other side was, was, was influenced by, by, by the Juden at the time was big big pull for a lot of the for a lot of the the anti-semitic uh rants and such at the time um they proclaimed that the aryan race uh the 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 white blonde haired blue eyed um race we they were the the, the ubermensch the supermen this was the idea of, of nietzsche's ubermensch though though this this has nothing to do with with the aryan race nietzsche had no had no intention of, of trying to say this nietzsche of course was 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 not an anti-Semite. He was. He he didn't didn't mind Jews whatsoever. Actually, and Nazis actually twist a lot of po popular uh, uh, philosophy and science and and create these these uh, quasi scientific theories like eugenics and, and other things and experiments to prove the superiority of the race. Um, so I mean that, that that's a one huge aspect of the of Germany as a whole. And, and just a reminder, I I think I put the most amount of people in this in this slide but but you have to remember that most of the the people who are actually moving and swaying the world though you have people like Adolf Hitler giving these ridiculous speeches to um, the people of Germany and and them all being very happy these are the people who are changing Germany here all these people hiling hiling to Hitler and and these military units who are out doing so I, I you know as much as I focus on on major characters of, of the war you you have to have to have a have an interesting idea of all the individual people underneath him Himmler and and his his lieutenants and and their lieutenants and sergeants and privates. So there's there's so many more people who are part of this huge movement. And this just to give you an idea of of who was in charge. So always keep a, keep an eye out with that in history. I think people get lost in this concept of oh there's only three or four important people when in reality there are millions of important people we sadly don't have a time to cover them all so we'll go to italy now and 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 continue on the idea of only covering a few people so so italy we have a benito mussolini who we were just talking about the member of the national fascist fascist party um they took power during the march of rome in 1922 they also did a very in uh, mussolini and the fascists did a very interesting thing um they actually answered what's called the Roman question. The Roman question existed for about 80 years previous to this, and it had to do with the status of the Vatican and the Catholic Church. Um, and so Benito Mussolini combined with uh, Pope Pius XI over here, that's, that's this guy in the, in the chair, um, Basically, what they ended up doing was was splitting Italy from from the Holy See itself, creating the Vatican City in in 1929. Um, and, and of course, like the like the Nazis, they themselves had their own brutal paramilitary group. Um, they in Italy they called them the Black Shirts, and they were the fascist soldiers. And, and a little interesting side note has to do with the Vatican and, and how during the war they, they were technically a neutral party because, of course, the Roman question allowed them to be their own individual nation. Uh, but there's a lot of speculation behind the neutrality of the Vatican and if they really knew what was going on with the with the Jews and, and lots of other stuff. I mean, we're not going to cover a whole lot of that now, but uh, this gentleman here, Pope Pius, Pope Pius XII, uh, the the middle gentleman with the with the white robe on he was the he would be the acting pope during the 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 war effort between 1939 and, and 1945 and there are lots of questions surrounding this man's papacy and and, and such like that but well, as I said something we'll cover in, a, in, a, in another lesson some other time uh, going on we have uh, we also have the Japanese the Japanese at the time uh, were, were having their own democracy movement that was viciously quelched 
is a good good term for that here we have uh, the u.s and british influences uh, really industrialized the nation and turned it into a, a very prosperous area um and 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 what happened was is during this time period you had the, the tasho uh, democracy movement, which was essentially a, a republican movement inside the Japanese prefectures to to support uh, demo democratically elected individuals to to run the country, but that was squelched in, in 1925 due to the uh, the peace preservation law. And, and what this did was it was response into uh, Russian communism and, and the expanses it was making in in the areas of China and. Um, also Eastern Asia as well. And at, the funny thing about this is that Showa technically means period of enlightened peace and harmony. So all during this World War II era, you have, you have this, this misnomer of the Showa, the Showa dynasty led by this gentleman here, Emperor Hirohito. Who we'll, we'll hear more about in the future, and then we, and this is of course Hirohito here, and and over here we have General Tojo, who who is the head general of the Japanese Imperial forces during the war, and he will he will lead the fight against um, the United States and, and other allied nations. Uh, so we have a uh, Jap Japan over here, and, and you know that that brings us to the the origins portion. So but, but let's just go back and take a look at the. At, at the forces over here. So now we've, we've essentially set the stage between the, the allies and the access. We have the west and the east who are technically, we're putting in the access, or the, the sorry, the, the allied category. Though as I said here, the, the China and, and the Soviet Union kind of play this, this really interesting middle role, especially the Soviet Union. And, and of course we have the, the access powers over here. Um, and so what we're going to do in next video is talk about the origins of the war. So I uh, can't wait to see you then and uh, enjoy watching. And I, I hope you're enjoying learning as well.